Hello again to you, my friend. Hope you're excited to see me because I am so wild. Yes, if this is your first time with us, you are very welcome and I hope you had a splendid time today with us. If this week is your birthday, congratulations, happy birthday, and we have a beautiful gift wrapped for you just in a minute. Enjoy that lovely gift. It was specially packaged for you. Now let us close our eyes as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our friends and the gift of our first timers. We thank you for the birthday celebrants because you have blessed them with yet another beautiful year. We ask that as they go about this new season of their life, that they will find your favor, your blessing, and your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Amen. Did you close your eyes? Yes, it is good to close your eyes to pray. Now it is time for us to go for praise and worship. Yes, I'm so excited because we will be celebrating and praising who? Praising our Father. So see you after praise and worship because I will also be celebrating here. Celebrate! Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And when the sun begins to shine, oh, when the sun begins to shine, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. Sounds its call when the trumpet sounds its call. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the trumpet sounds its call. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, how I want to be. Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, how I want to be in that number, oh, when the saints go marching in. And when the sun begins to shine, when the sun begins to shine, oh, Lord,
Welcome back. I had fun. Did you? I was celebrating and dancing and enjoying myself because it's good to celebrate. Now it's time to go to our very interesting topic. And it's about a very, very wise man called Solomon. He's very intelligent. The topic is about a godly request that Solomon made to God. Yes, and the topic is Solomon's godly request. I'm sure you're wondering, godly request, Solomon, Solomon wisdom. Yes, it's, it's very interesting. I promise you. Solomon's godly request. So you should take note of that. And the lesson is found in the book of 1 King chapter 3 from verse 5 to 14. But before we read it, I will hope you remember that last week we learned about something related to prayer. Yes, about how we should, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Yes, yes. And it's like a follow-up because it's about how someone did something in line with it. We are reading from the NIV version. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So, give your servant a discerning art to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern these great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you long life. Did you get that? Did you read the Bible along with me? It is very good to read the Bible. These things are not stories. They are things that happen. In fact, these people are all real people. So we are now going to the topic, the lesson proper. Like I said, the topic is Solomon's godly request. You know, we learned last week that Jesus taught us, taught his disciples to pray by teaching them, teaching them the Lord's prayer. And part of the Lord's prayer is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And there is a point where you get to, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That, this, this particular point is very important and it relates to what we are learning today. What Jesus taught us is that amidst our prayers, we should want the will of God to be done on earth. That is, we should have godly desires. And that is exactly what Solomon did. Now, I want you to imagine something. I want you to close your eyes. And imagine that you had a blank check. And you can ask for anything. Okay, it's not a check. You can just wish anything and imagine it. Just wish for anything. Okay, close your eyes. In one minute, in one second and two. Yes, now you can open it. So what did you have in mind? What did you picture? What did you wish for? I'm sure some of you wished for pizza. And some wished for what? You wanted to pass your exams. You don't want your mom to beat you. You want to be beautiful. You want to be tall. You want to travel abroad and on and on. Yes. Because what? You can ask for anything, right? Yes. That's exactly what happened to Solomon. Solomon had the opportunity to ask for anything before God. Actually, Solomon was king and he wanted to make a prayer. Just the same way you can make prayers. You see the way you made those wishes? That's how open your, 
your checks are. When you want to pray, whenever you close your eyes to pray, you can ask for anything. You can wish for anything. But your prayer is you turning that wish into a request, which is what Solomon did. But you know, you'd have expected Solomon, he should ask for, there are so many things he could have asked for. He can ask to be intelligent. He could have asked for pizza or ice cream. He could have asked for, you know, maybe weapons, maybe like guns, submarine. So many things he could have asked for. He could have had asked for a big house and so many things. But you know, Solomon didn't ask for that. Why? Because he had godly desires. Do you know what Solomon asked for in prayer? He had just become king and he wanted to pray to God. And as a little boy that he was, he was very young. He wanted to pray to God. And you know what he asked for? He didn't ask for all those things you asked for. All of the things you wished for, he didn't ask for them. Any of them. What he asked for was that God should give him discernment. So that he can go and come in before God's people. Because God had just made him king. He had just been made king. And he was just looking at, how do I achieve this thing that God has put before me? These are God's people. I'm not even wise enough to even lead them to judge right, to do what is right. So his prayer request was, God, help me to do what is right and make right judgments whenever I am dealing with your people. Because I know these people are very important to you and I don't want to judge them wrongly. You know, as a king, you can judge things because when people bring matters to you, you have to look who is correct, who is wrong. Even in taking decisions, you need to make right decisions. So Solomon was asking for wisdom and understanding. He asked for discernment, not wisdom to pass exam, so that he can lead God's people. He made a very godly request. He wanted something that God desired. That is, he wanted the will of God to be fulfilled on earth. Like Jesus said, he said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's the will of God on earth? His kingdom should come on earth. So we are here on earth as we are here. So many things are related to what is the, what will help the kingdom to come on earth. Evangelism, preaching to people, praying for people. And so G Solomon agreed with God. He supported God. He looks at one thing that, this is the kind of thing that God wants and that made it godly. You know when you say something is godly, you mean the kind of thing that God wants. He made his request more of the kind of things, thing that God wants and he asked God to assist him to achieve that. And you can do that too. Should there are a lot of godly things you can ask for. You can ask God to teach you to pray. That's a godly request. You can ask God to help you to evangelize so that your friend that lies. It's a godly request. You can ask God to help you not to steal again and not to lie and not to do any, commit any sin, any sin that you think you commit or you struggle with. Asking God for that is a godly request because it's a request that if God answers, it will help you to be more like God or to do something that will make God happy. But does it mean we cannot ask for normal things? We can. We can ask for them. But it is very important that we have godly desires. And do you know what God did? God rewards these things because, you know, when you set God first, what does it do? He sorts you. Do you know what God did for, to, for Solomon? God was so impressed. He looked at him. He said, you didn't even ask for the head of your enemies. You didn't even ask for wealth. You didn't even ask for, you didn't even ask for all the things that people would normally have asked for. You didn't ask for pizza. You didn't ask for a duplex. You ask for something that relates with what I want. I want Israelites to be able to, to follow me. And you ask for wisdom from me to be able to discern and judge right between those people. I said, this is very godly. You know, but because you did this, I'm going to give you what you asked for and much more. So God said, I will give you wisdom beyond what any other person has ever had. Imagine now, it is not you asking God. It's God that is now saying, see, because you set me first, I will even give you more than that. I'll give you wisdom that any other bird person before or after you, nobody will be as wise as you. And that's why you always hear the wise queen, King Solomon because till date, we all know that King Solomon was so wise. He was so wise that he, could, he wrote a lot of proverbs. He wrote a lot of songs, about over 1,000 songs, over three, about 3,000 proverbs. Solomon, he, he, he wrote and spoke so many things about trees. He had so much knowledge about birds, about beasts. He was so intelligent that kings and nations all around were coming to him. That is what God does 
when he is impressed about your prayer? And are you ready to make a godly request now? So I want you to close your eyes again. And this time, I want you to close your eyes and make a wish to God. Now, what would be that godly request you'll be making now? Close your eyes. Make a godly request in two seconds. One, two. Amen. What did you request for? You don't have to say it. You can write it down. You know, God knows your heart desires and he knows the things you request for. And when you make godly requests, God will even give you much more than you can ever imagine because God loves it. That his will should be done. And after that has been sought, he will give you your daily bread. He will give you every other thing that you need because our God, he knows all of our heart desires and all of our needs. With that, we have come to the end of this very, very, very interesting topic about King Solomon's godly request to God. And I hope that as you go about this week, you make your godly request to God. I want you to make sure that you pray every day and you make as long as it's good for you to make normal requests, you can pray for your mom and your dad, but along with it also add at least one or two godly requests and God will be so happy with you. And of course, he will give you more than what you asked for. Yes, because he never fails. And did you learn anything from today's lesson? Yes, if you did not learn anything, you should learn that it is good to always put God first. When you put God first, God even sorts you more than you can ever imagine. Solomon could not even have, imagine if Solomon were to think of what he would ask for. He could not have imagined that I want to ask for wisdom that everybody in the world, God gave him that much. That's how much God can do for you if you bring him and set him first. With that, we have come to the end of our very interesting lesson. But before we go, let us learn our memory verse. Our memory verse for today will be found in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 which reads, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Again, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Again, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So let's close our eyes as we round up with prayer. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everything we have learned today. We ask, Lord, that you help us to not be hearers only, but also doers of your word. And that you teach us to be godly in our character, in our hearts, and in our requests, like Solomon, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. With this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Have fun and see you next week. Bye.